coral trout are one of Australia's premium food fish. They're also a favourite with many anglers throughout Queensland and through the, the top of Australia. This is a large Barkey coral trout or inshore coral trout. You can see very definite blue spots on a red orange background. These guys are really cool. If you have a look at the, the blue dots on top of his eyes as it moves, they look really interesting underwater. Barkeeks get their name because of uh, elongated uh, blue spots below their eye and onto the gill casings. They're one of uh, three most common species. There are a number of species of coral trout, but the three most common ones are the bar cheeks, the offshore or common coral trout, and the very large blue spot coral trout. All of them very good eating, and all of them very popular with anglers. Bar cheeks occur closest to shore and out to the inner coral reefs. This is a large bar cheek. You can see those extended blue spots across the operculum, across the gill. This is a common coral trout found further offshore, typically, although not always. You can see the blue spots in these guys is much smaller and uh, nowhere near as doesn't stand out nearly as much underwater. Back to our bar cheek, here's a, a large bar cheek underwater. You can see that sometimes they have stripes, light stripes, down their body. Common coral trout also get this, and uh, the large blue spot trout keep it throughout their life. Coral trout can change their colour quite readily. Just watch the small fish that comes in from the left. Okay, it's a small bar cheek as is the large one. Now he just formed stripes on his body. If you look, he gets lighter as he uh, moves along as well. Here's another bar cheek. You can see the stripes and you can see him getting lighter and lighter in colour as he moves across the sand. They're quite adept at doing this. Here's that bar cheek again with these vertical bars. Not all of them have it, but some certainly do display it even after they've uh, come out of the water. This is a, a common coral trout, or well that's, that's probably its best name. Smaller blue dots. And here we've got the two side by side. So the bottom one at the right is a bar cheek. The one above it is a common. Now, it's not often, but sometimes they do occur in close proximity and sometimes side by side in a few locations. There he is, there's the bar cheek in the common side by side. Fairly similar in proportions, uh, very similar fish except for the coloration.
This is a large blue spot coral trout. They're typically found uh, further offshore again and out into the coral sea and they're more common uh, the further north you go. Not commonly seen the Southern Great Barrier Reef inshore. Very big, powerful fish. This is a large blue spot coral trout underwater. It's moving on this across the screen from left to right. Just zoom in a little. You can see the stripes are there and the stripes and the variation in the colour break up the pattern of the fish. So it's uh, a lot harder to see underwater than above water. Now these guys have got a, a bad reputation for uh, having ciguatera toxin which is a food poisoning uh, caused by these guys eating uh, small fish and uh, it's maybe not advisable to eat them. Okay, here's some common coral trout in what you'd call a resting uh, phase. So then their behaviour at the moment is uh, they're not don't, they're not looking to feed. They're hiding underneath plate coral, sitting on the bottom, not very active at all. Now that's uh, typical of when they're resting. Here's some that are actively up and looking for feed. These once again a common coral trout. You can see they're suspended above the, the bottom and much more active. They're looking to uh, eat some of their favourite food which is usually small reef fish. Reef prawns, things like that. Mantis shrimp. This guy has smelt the bait. He's having a look at it and trying to decide whether he wants to eat it or not. Just not sure at the moment. Is that food? Not certain. I'm going to try it. So up and off with it. Okay, so typically uh, coral trout are feeders. They when they're feeding, they grab the whole bait, and usually on the move. Now you notice that there's no coral trout initially, but as soon as uh, some of these smaller species start to feed, the coral trout appear, and this is uh, quite typical. So they're usually up looking for active and moving food. In terms of baits, they tend to rely on other smaller species to let them know that there's bait, that, that there's food available. This guy has come in to see what all the fuss is about. Sometimes I think when they're looking at it, they, they're not sure whether this is food or not. It smells right, but it's not moving. Yep, I'll give it a go. Okay, once again, it takes the whole bait and usually at a rush. 
Okay, here's a feeding frenzy of a whole range of different species. And watch the coral trout involved here. Now this is a large bait, so it's going to be difficult for them to grab the whole thing. So they're trying to figure out what to do. And one of the small fish breaks off a piece. You'll see the tail of the tuna come up. There it is there. And one of the uh, smallmouth nanny guys, uh, largemouth, goes off to the side. The coral trout after him and uh, pinches his food. Just watch that a little bit in slow motion. Okay, there's the piece of uh, bait come up away. Large mouth picks it up and takes it off to the side. And soon there's a number of fish in hot pursuit, including coral trout. Back he comes, and there's his prize in his mouth. Just swallowing it. This is... Uh, Quite a common way that you see coral trout feeding in this uh, baited underwater video. So here we've got a little iodine brim who's broken off a piece of the bait. Now watch to the left hand side as he heads off screen. Okay, coral trout seen that. I'll have that bait. And steals it. Just show that last bit in show, slow motion. There he is. He's got uh, the the iodine brim's got some bait in his mouth. Along comes the coral trout. The food is moving, so he wants it. Off he goes and gets it. It's another example. Now we've got small fish here actively feeding on the bait and that's a good way of attracting attention and large fish. So if you look from uh, the left, in comes first a large red throat emperor. He grabs a bit of it but there's also a coral trout. And there's a the coral trout taking some food off of that iodine brim. In slow motion, there it is. Look at the little red throat on the left with bait in his mouth and the coral trout off after him and takes the bait out of his mouth. I think this is why sometimes it's not uncommon to catch two coral trout on a lure, one on the front hook, one on the back hook. Okay, some more feeding coral trout. Grabs hold of the whole bait. Had a rush and off with it. So typically, if they're going to feed, that's what they do. So, okay, here's a bar cheek. Same thing, pinches the whole bait. Gets out of there. Out of the way of the large gold spot cod. They don't have the teeth and equipment to tear off pieces of bait. They very much uh, like to eat the whole thing. Very similar to cod. Well, I suppose they're fairly closely related. Okay, here's that bar cheek again. The common above him. So 
So the Slady Brim have uh, stirred them up. He, he really recognises his food and starts to feed. Okay, you can see him trying to take a piece off of the stripey, piece of the bait. Grabs the whole thing and takes off with it. The big cod at the back is not very impressed. He's lost his uh, potential food. Okay, sometimes coral trout bite off more than they can chew. You can see this is a very large fish frame. And what this uh, trout has done, he's latched on, determined to try and uh, and eat it, but it's far too big for him. He doesn't have the teeth or the feeding behaviour to break off uh, pieces of the large bait. So he just sits there <laughs> and clamped onto it. Probably trying to figure out what he should do next. See the Red Emperor, they, they can tear pieces off the bait, so can the grassy sweet lip behind. Not the coral trout. Okay, coral trout are notorious for breaking people's fishing lines. They run into coral, into a hole, and end up breaking the line. Now what happens to these fish? If you have a look at this coral trout, it's a uh, barchi, has a hook firmly embedded in the corner of its mouth. Okay, there it is. Zoom in a bit there. You can see it's a large uh, silver hook in the, the corner of its mouth. There's no attached fishing line, so he's broken somebody's line. Now, there are many fishermen who will give you stories of how they lose a coral trout and within an hour later they catch the same fish with their hooks still in, embedded in their mouth. Right, other evidence of how uh, tough these coral trout are it comes from tagging. There's been a number of coral trout tagged and they survive well, particularly in shallow water. They don't tend to move much, they tend to stay on the same patch of reef and only occasionally do they get up and leave. And when they do leave, they can go for quite some distance, 50 to 100 kilometres.